Hey, good evening. Um, we are here to try to do a quick and easy paint job. Uh, we're just going to try to paint a Porsche GT3 for uh, an upcoming championship series. Um, we're going to show you how we do a quick paint job with uh, Frito Sport colors and some of our logos so that anybody can really just pick a simple template that's provided by iRacing and change colors and add your own team logos or sponsors. Um, you know, there's guys like Eric and Travis from Rick Motec Extreme Motorsports League. They do an, an amazing job. They go above and beyond with uh, providing, you know, custom made templates, layers, images, everything that they do, you know, goes a bit above of what I'm capable of doing right now. Uh, I'm trying to learn some of those other things and even working with spec maps is still fairly new to me. So let's just jump in and do something quick. Uh, if you need to get a paint done for your league, you know, and it's coming up, this is something that I normally do just to get us by. But yeah, I definitely want to keep learning more and more. But hopefully this helps people with basics of understanding uh, layers and how to work with uh, things like that. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. I'm going to launch GIMP and we'll grab the Porsche template and uh, I'll show you what I do. Okay, so here we are in GIMP. I'm going to click on File. We're going to go to Open as Layers. I'm going to then find where I store my iRacing templates that I have downloaded from Trading Paint. I click on iRacing Templates, All iRacing Templates, and I'm going to find the Porsche GT3 uh, template that they provide and we'll start uh, with that one. Like I said, this is a very simple, basic approach to doing paints. I'm not including spec maps or custom patterns or anything like that. Um, so there's the Porsche 911 R GT3 PSD file. We're gonna click open. Now you might get this uh, Photoshop image message, excessive number of whatever. Um, but then also what you're looking for is for this to pop up sometimes, convert to RGB working space. I leave everything alone and I just say convert. It converts and there you go, there you have your template. Now here on the lower right you can see you have paintable area, turn off before, um, before exporting TGA and the custom spec maps. So this is how it comes, right? You see this little eye icon that basically lets you see, if you have it enabled, it lets you see what's on there, otherwise it takes everything away. We're going to expand the paintable area and you have layer 49. You can click on it. You see it goes away. It comes back. We're not going to worry about that yet. We are going to enable the car patterns. So we're going to click on that to so that we can have the eye icon right there. And then we're going to expand the car patterns. <coughs> Earlier we had decided we wanted to use car pattern 21 and you see the list goes 0, 0, 1 and so on and then there's also spec maps also for those that are provided by iRacing and you can see here we don't want to do car pattern one zero 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 because look at it it's a little bland so we're going to take it away we hide it now visible is car pattern zero zero one which is provided by iRacing it's a Porsche factory scheme we take that away and you can see that's the spec map that they have done to make things either metallic or rough or whatever we take that away, then you see the PATH Motorsports uh, Porsche, take that away, and then you see their spec map for it. And like I said, we're not dealing with that tonight. We're taking that away. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make these not visible all the way till we get to car pattern 21, which is the one that we are selecting to work with tonight. So I'm taking these and hiding them, making them not visible. Let's see, we're getting close to 21. Going away, going away. There we go. We're getting closer. See where 21 is. It's at the bottom of these. So I'm going to keep going and clicking these so they are not visible to us. So they can't be modified. So I think the next one is 21. And that is it. Car pattern 21. So now that we have 21, we're going to go ahead and make other patterns that we are not using not visible. And same with the base layer. We're going to take that away. So basically, we have. The only one we can see is car pattern 21, the one we are choosing to work with. Now we scroll up and in order to not cause any problems with like the, the number plate, things like that, pit box color, we're also going to make those 
uh, not visible for this time while we manipulate the car pattern colors. Take that away. We leave paintable area on and car pattern on and of course our car pattern 21 down here. So let's see. Now we need to look at this one. We're going to expand this red one which is turn off before exporting TGA is what it says and we're going to make the mask not visible and also the car mandatory which are these black uh, car parts we're going to take those and make them not visible we're also going to click turn off before exporting TGA so spec maps are not visible this whole red section is not visible now let's go back down and I'll show you how we work with the red green and blue um, areas of the car so I'm going to select this again this pattern I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to scroll up to new layer. I know it's hard to see on this on my triples, but I'm going to click on new layer. And you see there's green. I'm going to move this over. Create a new layer. We're going to create the green the green one. And we're going to say okay. And if you look here, it put it right above the pattern. Now I'm going to click on the car pattern again. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to new layer one more time and now we need to change to blue because there are blue lines they're very minimal on this car but it is a color so then we're gonna do the same thing create a new layer for the blue layer the blue color we say okay and now you can see we have blue green now we'll click on car pattern again and one more time we're going to select new layer and this time we're going to type red now we're gonna say okay and now if you look above the car pattern we have red blue and green so now what we need to do is I'm going to click on the car pattern I'm going to come here to channels we have layers channels and paths and paths is something I haven't worked with but I know Eric and Travis have done quite a bit with those and that's what I'm trying to understand but anyway back to what we're doing the basic stuff channels in channels I'm going to take this blue and drag it down here the green drag it down here and the red but then I also need to go back and make sure that I click this here so that they are all have a darker background. That means we'll be able to utilize them and play with them. Now I go back to layers. And here in these layers that are visible to us, I'm going to go to the red one. I select it. And we need to basically add a mask that will only allow us to manipulate the red colors when we are selecting this one. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add layer mask. The layer mask we want to add is the red channel copy and we say add so now you can see next to it is right there red now I click on blue same thing right click add layer mask blue channel copy add so basically what it's telling it is that anything that associates with those colors and is that car part is painted that way it's going to only manipulate those colors we select the green right click add layer mask and we go for the green channel copy and we say add so there you go there you have it uh, now we can start working with this and we're gonna do a quick Frito Sport uh, paint job on this so now let's go to green or actually this is the red the red color um, I think what we will do with this one this time let's uh, go ahead and use the red as our uh, black and see bucket fill tool is selected so we're going to change the foreground color I think the red this time will be done in black we say okay and we will paint it so now you see anything that was red over here is now black now what we want to do I think it's kind of a cool effect and it's still simple is that we have downloaded a 2048 by 2048 layer which is this size of this square and it's a carbon fiber weave we are going to insert that in between the red and the blue layers in order so I'm still selecting in the red I'm going to go to file open as layers and now I have to find my carbon fiber 2048 by 2048 square um, sorry this is just where I have it saved it's kind of uh, really deep in some folders but 
we're going to scroll to one of the layers that I can apply. And honestly, you can apply anything. Like, I could apply something like this. I could apply something like this. Let's do that really quick. Well, actually, no. Let's just do what I was here to do. But basically, you can apply. These are all, you can see the pixel size. It's 2048 by 2048. So we're going to select this one. Carbon fiber texture from Trading Paints. And it's 2048 by 2048. It's that perfect size for that square that we have our template on. And I'm going to say open. Now you can see here, it inserted that right above our layer that we painted black. You can see it covers everything right now. So what I'm going to do is I double click that carbon fiber uh, square that we just added. And here in opacity, I'm going to bring that down from 100 all the way down to, let's say, 40. And I'm going to click on, I'm going to click on OK. Once I brought it down to 40. I say OK. And now you can see that on top of this black layer, which originally was red, we painted it black. Then we added the carbon fiber layer. If I take that carbon fiber layer that we added and I make I enable it I make it visible you can see that it's going to be a carbon fiber weave we can take it away it's that black that we added but we're gonna leave it there so now we have the blues and the greens that we want to work with so now the blue color you can see it's very faint lines here the blue let's go ahead and just uh, let's make it red on this car so we're gonna select a bright red or nah, maybe not so bright and you can see the HTML annotation here we're gonna say OK and we're gonna come over and since we have that layer selected it's those blue lines you see on the car I'm just gonna click anywhere and all of that blue should turn into red because that's what we selected up there always remember you wanna have this foreground color fill selected foreground color fill so then we're gonna now select the green. We're gonna change that green to a Frito Sport yellow that we normally use. So let's go ahead and since we still have the bucket tool selected, we're gonna choose this red square. And now we choose our Frito Sport yellow, which is this color code FFAE00. I say okay. And I am now going to paint it. And you see anything that was green is now yellow. So now that's basically all I do to just use the iRacing templates that they give you, add the colors I want to use, and really all I sneak in is this uh, carbon fiber texture uh, JPEG. And you can find those online. You can Google, um, or you can find them even on iRacing's, uh, or on Trading Paints, I mean. So now we're going to close this up because we're done with the car pattern. You see, so I click that plus. I don't want it expanded anymore. I'm not really going to use it. Now we're going to focus on other things. We're going to bring back the pit box colors. I'm going to enable the visibility. And you can see it's these two boxes at the bottom that are red and uh, red and green. We want to be able to find our pit, pit box when we come down pit lane so I know what tent to look for. I'm going to click OK because we're going to keep it that Frito Sport yellow. I click on those two boxes and I know now that my, my pit crew is going to have a yellow tent and yellow toolbox or whatever they have on the other side of the pit lane. Now we select car decal and we're gonna make that visible and you get your number plate back from iRacing. You can select that one or you can select the IMSA one and I can take away the car decal and then you get that. So you see you can decide which one you want IMSA, car decal or the iRacing one. We're going to leave it on the car decal one, the uh, original high racing one for now. Okay, so paintable area is done. I uh, closed it up. Now we come back here. We want to click at the top of this red box here to turn off before exporting TGA. And we're going to go down here. We don't want the wire. The wire helps you, though, if you are adding sponsor sometimes or you need to make something center in a particular area. But we don't need it right now. We're going to click on mask. We want to see the little eye icon so it's visible. And now you have the mask cut out of the car. Now we come down here. And if you need to see where the numbers are going to go, that's where the numbers would go for the IMSA number plate. 
if you want to see the number plate for this you see it's perfectly squared up so you know that if you're putting a sponsor on the back bumper of this car you don't want it to be where that pink square is or you know other places too like where anywhere anywhere that pops up you don't want to really block that because that's where the number gets stamped by erasing especially if you don't have trading paints pro now let's click this is layer 56 i'm not sure exactly what that does it just brings up those little green boxes that you see flashing in the screen we'll leave that on that's fine and let's bring up this other one this car mandatory this one here car mandatory we're going to go ahead and click the disability icon for that and you can see that brings those certain car parts and little uh, arrows to the tow hooks but now the important part is adding our, our uh, Frito Sport sponsors to the car and possibly names and whatnot. So I'm going to click on the sponsor. Now that I'm there, I click that little eye icon. And now I'll be able to add stuff to it like uh, sponsors on the doors, a couple sponsors in the front, the sides, excuse me, um, and possibly our last name to the wing of the car. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, remember, we have sponsor selected. So any image that we add as a sponsor, it's going to go above the sponsor layer. And you will see that. Just keep an eye out once I add a layer where this goes. So I'm going to click on File, Open as Layers. And I'm just going to go back here to 2018 Freedom Sport Logos folder. Uh, we have different ones here that we've ran before. We're going to try to find some of the ones that we've ran. Um, let's see what we have. What we can do, let's just see what we have. Frito Sport, Frito Sport Mills. Let me see if we have some Frito Sport Endurance Team ones. What else do we have? Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look at what this one looks like. Um, so I've added it. I just want you to see right now you can see that that image that we just added is right here. It's selected and it just popped up right above the layer I was uh, on before. So now I'm going to click over here above the paint bucket tool is the move tool. Now I can you see it when it's like a finger the icon is has a like a pointy finger that oh I guess you can't see it. Anyway let's move this. You can see there's some issues with our with that one. So we're not going to use that one for tonight because it, it appears that I needed to fill in some of this image and it was not working. So one thing you can always look at here, if you make a mistake, you can click on edit and then undo move move layer. And then I'm going to do edit again and I'm going to say undo open layers. And we're going to select a different image to put on the side of the car. Open as layers. And we will go back up and find just our normal Frito Sport image that we put on the side of the car. Here it is. Say open and it's pretty big. So we're going to resize it. You can go to the icon here. It's the scale tool. I've selected it. You click on the image you're trying to resize and you can use the boxes or you can use the the different numbers, the different arrows on width and height. So I'm just going to grab this middle one and I'm going to drag it down, drag it down. And it looks to be about a good size that would fit in that pink section there. It says 505 by 505. Let's just go down to 500 and say scale. Now I'm going to grab the move tool. But before I do that, I'm going to click on this arrow over here and scroll to 100%. We were at 33% right now, 33.3. We'll go to 100 you can see that carbon fiber weave we laid on the car. I'm going to scroll down with my mouse. And now that I can see this, I'm going to put my cursor right over the image. And I'm dragging it over to see if it'll fit here. I'm going to try to center it in this uh, in this box. You can always rotate it, you know, give it a better look. I could always, um, you know, rotate it like this to fit in here. And that's something we might want to do, you know, just because of the way that this pattern is. So I guess let's rotate it a little. We click rotate. It's rotated. Now I can click the move tool again. 
and now I can kind of move this around. It, it's okay if it goes, uh, if it's not necessarily in that sponsor box. We can click wire and you can see, oh, we have a conflict, you know? We have a conflict that the door handle is going to directly interfere with the logo if it's rotated that way. So let's leave the wire on for a bit. You see the wire? We'll leave it on for a bit and then let's go move our tool again but we're going or move our image we're actually going to rotate it again and we're going to go back to what we were kind of uh to make it fit into that pink image or that pink uh, sponsor uh, logo box now we're going to scale again you see we're going to scale using the scale tool make it smaller and we want it to fit there so we made it a little smaller. Now I'm going to say scale. It's at, we'll do 750 by 750 scale. We click on the move tool again. And now, now we're going to move the image. And looks like we still need to make it a little smaller, but you know, that might be okay. We see that the F is kind of lined up with the, with the lines there. We see that we're not really hitting the door handle anymore. Yes, it, we are a little bit running off of the pink uh, sponsor box, but it's not interfering with anything else or with the door or the pattern or the wireframe. So if we take the wireframe off, we take the sponsor off, that's what it'll look like. But let's leave that sponsor on. It's our guide. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click that Frito Sport logo here and I'm going to go up to duplicate layer I'm going to duplicate that layer it so there's another layer sitting here and now I'm going to drag that one over to this side I'm just gonna set it down because I have to rotate it obviously I'm gonna turn the wire back on and I'm going to rotate we select that rotate tool here I'm going to rotate it I'm going to click this slider and it'll do a 180 all the way to the end and I click rotate now I can grab the move icon again I've selected it now I can move this into place so we have to decide exactly is that where we wanted it I didn't place a guide to align things so I'm using the wire guide basically we remember that the F here lines up with this vertical line so we're gonna do that same thing by moving this over to here the end of the Frito Sport sticker or image lines up with that vertical line in the pink box. And we're not hitting the door handle. Everything looks to be good. Let's zoom out. So we'll go back to, let's go to 50% and see what that looks like. It looks like they're both pretty much centered where we need them to be in that uh, hit box or the pink uh, sponsor logo box. <coughs> so let's see if we take the wire away, we take the sponsor away. That looks okay for now. Like I said, you can always angle it, but we noticed that if we angled it, we would be going o onto the door handle. So now let's go ahead and add another uh, another one of our sponsors to this car. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll say open as layers. So we went to file, open as layers. We are still in the Frito Sport logos folder. So now I'm just going to type the letter I, and then I'm going to scroll my mouse down, and I find ILSR Designs, which is our friend and sponsor, Kev Mills. We say open. And you see it's a pretty big one. And we want to be able to put that um, probably on the front here where this pink uh, vertical rectangle is. So we need to resize that one as well. So I'm going to scale that. Sorry. We're going to scale that. You can always press Shift and S for scale or Shift and R to rotate. So first we want to scale it down to what we think might fit there. It's a little small, 245, we'll just say scale, but we also want to rotate it. So I'm going to select that rotate tool by pressing shift and R. I press shift and R and we want to rotate it to 90 degrees. So it'll go on the hood of the car. I click rotate. Now I click the move tool and I'm going to move this over in place somewhat in place 
we place it there now I'm gonna click the arrow down here at the bottom and go to a hundred percent maybe we'll go to two hundred percent so we can really get close in and see what that's gonna look like so now we want to make that fit in this rectangle the best we can I'm going to press shift and s for scale and now I'm going to use these different boxes to make it fit the best way I can here. So you see we're already at the edge of the lower area here. So we need to center that better. I'm going to click scale to turn that off. And I'm going to move the layer again, move the image. Let's move it to where it's somewhat centered in this pink uh, area here of the sponsor logo. Okay, so there we are. We can still scale it a little more. So I'm going to press Shift and S to scale again. And I'm going to use, I'm using these middle ones. So we'll go up a little. And it looks like we're at our limits on the, on the edges here. So we'll leave it there. We'll go ahead and click scale. And let's get rid of the wire. So we can see that the, the image is at the border of the sponsor box. So we're not going to use all of the sponsor boxes right now we'll just add two more to the rear quarter panels we say open as layers and we're going to look for uh we're going to press the g for greg brockway consulting who is another one of our friends and sponsors let's say open and you see it's a bit of a large one as well uh, let's move it down there first so i click the move tool i grab the image I move it down here now I'm going to click I'm going to press shift and s to resize it kind of get it close to that area I know it's gonna be a bit smaller right so we've kind of got it smaller it's 250 width 49 height we say scale now we're gonna zoom in so we can actually work with it we're trying 200% there's the door and there's our Greg Brockway consulting logo we know we need to rotate it so let's go ahead and do that first so I'm gonna press shift and R we're gonna rotate it and we think that's kind of even try to move it just a little I don't have the most uh, the most stable hands here but the angle is negative 12.29 we say rotate now we're gonna move it let's click the move tool we're gonna try to move it into place and we'll do we'll move one end of it there like that let's see here okay we do it like that and you see it's running off the off of the box that it's supposed to fit in I'm gonna press shift and s to scale again and I'm gonna use this middle box here on the right to make it fit so now it fits we click scale that's the size we're going to use I'm going to click the move tool because I kind of want to center it in this area so that looks about centered to me in that sponsor box and now I'm going to do a duplicate and move it to the other side as well I know that some guys use flip and stuff like that but I haven't used that as much yet or had success with it yet so I'm just going to right click on that logo again and I'm going to duplicate the layer which is just duplicating the image and you see how much darker that looks we like that so normally some of the images I duplicate them to make them stand out more but for now let's just move this one over to keep things simple so I drag it over here now we need it to fit here so I'm gonna have to first rotate it so I'm gonna click shift and R for the rotate tool and I'm gonna do a 180 but you can see 180 didn't do it all for us so then I'm gonna click the image itself and do it manually so I need to try to get that best as possible and you see that angle 155 by 90 0.96 I click rotate now I can move it I'm gonna click on the move tool and of course there's better ways to do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing but like I said this is what I've there's a routine I've been following just to get something done and I think it works okay so now we have those let's uh, go back to 33.3 percent now that we have uh, Islers are designs on the hood Frito Sport on the side which is a team Greg Brockway consulting on the rear quarter panels um, you know and you can always put something on the uh, 
the pit box area not the pit box but the uh down where you see the on the lower left of this image you see two pink triangles or rectangles i mean those pink rectangles you can always place something there there will be a number number that goes there you see the green boxes that appear there so that's basically what you would see coming into pit lane you see the number is the green box and then you can have like an image of the team or the sponsor's name or whatever also pop up there or you could have the driver's name pop up there so you would have you would have the let's say uh, my number is 57 all of those green boxes would have 57 and then i could put my name edgar or i could put the frito sport logo in that pink rectangle on those uh those are basically the the lollipops that the pitman would show up with now let's uh let's put something on the wing of this car and we'll see how it turns out i might get it wrong i will upload this so so you can see it in iRacing's uh paint booth so you can see what what this looks like applied so now i clicked on this here this is uh, text tool so the text tool I'm just gonna make a rectangle here around the uh, pink area let's zoom in a little bit 100% we'll go here and we want to change the image uh, color otherwise it'll just blend in with that yellow so let's use um, let's use that red we were using before okay and we're going to type fritosportracing.com I guess we'll use cap blocks and we'll say fritosportracing.com and obviously it's too big so I'm going to highlight the letters and then I'm going to and you, you could put your last name or whatever you want to put there you know you can find fancy font as well but right now we're just doing this nice and easy the font we needed was 48 size <coughs> so now that we have that i'm going to click on the move tool and i kind of want to center this right so i'm going to kind of move it to where i think it's centered and there you go you can also use the wire tool there as well to help you center things and like i said we're going to look at this in the iRacing paint booth but now before we get out of here let's go back to 33 percent 33.3 percent and let's remove the sponsor boxes and you can get an idea what this is going to look like so now let's you know you can always zoom in and you could add a driver's name you could always add a driver's name somewhere like um, you know like like here you could add a driver's name or you could add it somewhere else as well but we're not gonna do that right now so let's uh, forget about that and let's just save this and we are going to upload it so that we can see it in our uh, iRacing paint booth. So we're going to save this as, and I'm going to give it a name. And we're going to say GIMP uh, Frito Test. And we're going to save it It's as the XCF file that it is. We click Save. OK and now we're going to click on file again and we're going to go to export as and like i said the fritosportracing.com i could have placed that on the bottom side of the wing i might need to come back and flip it 180 we'll find out soon enough we we'll click on export as and here you don't want it to be a png you need it to be a tga file so i'm going to click over here select file type by extension and i'm going to scroll down until i find tga i click on tga I say export and it's going to ask me I just export images TGA I just click on export that's fine so now we're going to minimize this and we are going to open up trading paints let's go to trading paints so see these are some of the ones we've done before um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to my paints we're going to go to what I'm racing and I'm going to find that Porsche over here on the left. I don't have Trading Paints Pro. We're going to click on that Porsche 911 GT3R. You can see what I'm currently racing as it pops up. See, so I guess we did do the wing okay. You can tell because I placed the ILR Designs um, logo on our wing on this uh, car that I had painted before. 
we're going to go to paint options choose new paint we're going to upload a paint we're going to select a file and now we need to go to where our paint is stored which was uh, iRacing templates all iRacing templates then we find the Porsche where is it there it is Porsche GTR and we had named it GIMP Frito test now we say open it's uploading our paint to trading paints we're not uploading to the showroom we're uploading it directly to our uh, trading paints to what I'm racing it says your new paint has been uploaded look for it next time you race I click on got it and there you see the changes so now let's go ahead and launch the we're going to launch the trading paints app and we're going to launch iRacing and go to my content so you can see this launched right trading paints I launch that before I load into iRacing the UI I click on my content and now I'm going to scroll down through my cars until we find that Porsche and then we will see what it looks like in the showroom <coughs> So we should be there. Where are we? Here we are. So I'm going to click on car model for this Porsche GT3. And here you go. This is the paint that we just made in trading paints. You see the, the red layer, we painted it black. And above the red layer, we added this carbon fiber layer. Then the next layer we had, I think, was the blue, which we decided to paint red, which gave us this uh, these red lines and then the uh, green layer we decided to paint it uh, yellow the Frito Sport yellow that we normally use so you can see this is the effect that we end up with on this car the black is has the carbon fiber layer above it in GIMP and that's that's down in, uh, here let me open up the paintable area car patterns and we'll scroll down so you can see we started with this black layer we added the carbon fiber layer we m m changed the opacity to 40 and then the red is the red lines you see the yellow is there that was the green layer before let's go back and you can see this is how that turned out then we went ahead and once we were done with the car pattern that iRacing gave us and putting the colors we wanted on it we went ahead and we added the, the Frito Sport logo to the side of the car we added the I Love Sim Racing Designs logo to the front. And we also added the Greg Brockway Consulting Computer Solutions for Business logos on the rear quarter panels. And like I said, this is just very basic beginning of working with car paints. All the other guys do such a great job in the leagues that I'm in. And, uh, you know, we can just hope to learn more from them. Um, big thanks to Eric Violet for his guide that got us started doing this stuff. And then Travis and Eric keep giving tips on things to do and uh, you know guys like Brandon Carl and all sorts of guys that are working with paints and Terry Crouch as well that has shown us how to do paint jobs it's uh, you know he's been teaching me about spec maps and I've been getting advice from everybody so thank you for that uh, we added FritoSportRacing.com that was a text that we added you can see so those were the car patterns you see what's visible you see the pit box color we changed it the car decals are there we can remove that you can apply these um, and if you have a league decal I'll show you that right now as well but yeah you can see you have the car mandatory um, then you have the Frito Sport logos that we added you make them visible invisible you can change things up there's the Greg Brockway consulting ones and then the Frito Sport Racing.com that was our text layer there uh, the mask you see it shows up there and now let me show you we have the mask there if we were gonna we forgot we left the car layer or the the number plate where is it this one so we have that there we're gonna remove that really quick and we are over here in the mask layer let me show you what it looks like when you add the um, the Rick Motec layer like you would this is what you would do with some leagues okay I say open this is the Rick Motec guide the guide they give it to you so that you will not place your stickers 
for sponsors in the wrong areas. So you can see when they provide this to you, they do the windshield for you. They provide your number plate. They will provide, they will put your number on there and uh, things like that. So basically you use their guide so you know where not to place things so that they won't overlap. You see the rear bumper, you have the Apex Racing TV logo, Rick Motec, Extreme Scoring, Rick Motec GTP for Pro, um, you know, the Pro Forma number plate, all those things. So you don't want to get those uh, mixed up with your own images. So this is why they give you this guide so you know that your paint will pass inspection and can be submitted. So. I'm just going to put the car decal back on that we were using and let's go back to taking a look at this uh, beautiful Porsche. Like I said, this is very basic stuff that we did, but I think it looks pretty good for just a basic paint job. You can always start working with spec maps and doing more in-depth stuff and you will learn how to uh, be more efficient like uh, the guys I mentioned earlier do with their paint jobs and schemes. So anyway, that should be it. That really covers everything and you can always use trading paints while you're doing this you can click automatically refresh paints click it again and save and it should be able to change things there if you need it to so for example i'm going to change it back to what i was using i'm going to say choose new paint um, from favorites this is the one that i've been using lately oops clicked the wrong button or did i Okay, no, I did not. So you'll see now this is what I'm racing. You're going to see how that changes. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say automatically refresh paints, save. It should sync and download the new one I'm on. And if we go back, look at that. It changed to the current one that I was running. So Dark Nuff stuff makes awesome Husingfeld Sprint mods for pedals, Husingfeld Sprints. We have the Friedel's Ford Endurance logo. We still have some of that far carbon fiber in there. And uh, I love some racing designs. So yeah, there you go. That's what I'm currently racing with this car. And you can see we've done this kind of stuff with other, other cars as well. And like I said, we've this is just using iRacing templates, changing the colors and adding... Uh, see, this one does have the Rick Motec um, decal layer applied to it for the sports car series might be a little outdated one but yeah I mean this is this kind of what that would look like you know and we have our logos added to it and our car number uh, here's a custom paint job that was done by my my old teammate Hugo Hernandez Gutierrez a little more intricate you know he obviously did this custom pattern himself added different things as well you see the names different things like that so just another idea of how far you can go, you know, if you're adding different patterns. Um, but yeah, it's pretty neat what you can do. I mean, we go back here and I want to just show you guys before we close things off that you can add other sorts of patterns. So let's say instead of that yellow, if we don't want to have that, or if we want to, let's say we want to change this black. We want to change that black and instead of the carbon fiber, we'll take the carbon fiber away. We don't want to just have that black or the carbon fiber. Let's go back here and we will find something kind of cool to change. But like this is the last thing I want to show. You don't you don't have to do this kind of stuff. This is just showing you that you can make cool stuff without really having to go crazy custom from uh, from the ground up. Okay. So let's see. We should be able to find one of these hexagon type camo figures. Or actually, let's see. There's a hexagon one I've used in the past. And honestly, all of these are 2048 by 2048 images that I have gotten off of Google. Um, I'll tell you, a lot of these are iPad wallpapers, and I just found out that they are the right size. Yeah, some are ugly, but every once in a while, you find something that can look kind of cool. So let's see here. Let's find the hexacamo one that I've used in the past. Should be coming up sometime soon. I got a lot of junk here I need to get rid of. Some are not that great. And some are not the right size either, and they look a little distorted when you resize them. But I'll find it here. And you know, and that's the thing, is just play around with it. You'll be able to find something you like. 
should turn out pretty cool. There we go. So let's use this one. And see, you can add just to that layer something different. So we can, since it's a test, let's see, let's just save this. We'll export it and we'll apply it. And then we'll get out of here and wrap this up. Um, yeah, we'll export it to the same thing. Replace it. We'll say export. We'll go back to trading paint. And we will say choose new paint, upload a paint, select a file, and that same one we were working with because we just overwrote that file. We say got it. We'll see if it shows up here. And now we can go to iRacing. And we probably have to refresh trading paints. You'll see. So there's a Porsche 911 GT3. It's going to show the one that's current until we refresh. So let's pull up trading paints, automatically refresh paints, click save. It should do its thing. Or it's going to crash. Okay, there it goes. And now I remove that, and then you can see that layer that I just put on. Now it has it. Sure, that doesn't look the greatest right now, but you know, like I said, you can play with things, you can find different patterns, you can apply them how you like. And uh, yeah, you can come up with some cool stuff, but definitely play with it. Take some time, and uh, things should work out pretty well. Let me know if you guys have questions. Feel free to hit me up. Take care.